On this one, I'm gonna attempt to draw someone famous and see if I can get the likeness right. So the first thing I always do is look at the head shape. On this head shape, it seems like a, like a giant block of wood. So I'm just trying to find it here in the sketch. Another thing I'm looking at is how much space is above the eyes and how much is below the eyes. In this photo, it's obviously there's a lot of space below the eyes and very little above the eyes. And that is the first thing I want to exaggerate. <clears throat> this dimension line here is going to help me find something. Okay, I think I got it. <clears throat> In my imagination, I can already start to see the caricature I want to draw. The next shape I'm looking for is the T shape. So that's the shape that the eyes and the nose makes. Okay, I think that's enough of a sketch. with the eyes. This eye. It's more open than the other eye. That's the first difference. This eye is kind of popped open whereas this eye is kind of squinted. The eyelid is huge. and the pupil are so dark that I think I can just make the whole thing dark and it'll be a little bit more bold looking. <clears throat> and the eyebrow is kind of popped up and so I'm going to exaggerate that. And I'm trying to use straight bold lines if I can. There's a, like an anger wrinkle there. And then the bridge of the nose, it goes right into this wrinkle in the forehead. So I'm going to draw both together. That's the wrinkle, and then that's the bridge of the nose. I'm trying to do one smooth, confident line. <clears throat> now the eye on the other side. I'm looking for the shape. Here. And it's squinted in this eye, so I can exaggerate that a little bit. Drop that in as a dark eye. Eyelid. It's also more squinted. Eyebrow. This is just like a one-shot caricature. So I don't always get them right the first time. Accentuate the bridge of the nose a little bit. The bulb of the nose is kind of wide. <clears throat> That's another thing I look for is look for the edge of the nostrils when they come up. Do they line up with the tear ducts? If they go out a little bit, then you can exaggerate it much wider. If they're in, narrower than the two tear ducts, then they, you can be much narrower. His are wide, even though this is in three-quarter view. So I could get away with drawing a big wide nose. <clears throat> I think 
divot there in his lips. Frown. Bottom lip there. There's a little shelf underneath the bottom lip. And just the top line to indicate the bulb of the chin. <clears throat> now, Let's add some wrinkles with it. I still have, I'm using the small marker. And if you look on the photo, you can see the bone of the, the bridge of his eyes, and then the cheekbone, and then the jaw. And that's not a hard line, but I can use some small lines to sort of indicate that it's there. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm done with my small marker. I get the big one out. I usually start with the chin to help ground it so that I don't shoot past where I want to go. Make a line there. Also, he has the a large these upper lip muscles. We'll figure out how I'm going to do that in a minute. But first, let's do a bold line like this. I can use the small side of my Tombow and and I'm not just drawing a line. I'm thinking of the muscle and then I'm trying to define that edge of it with a line. Sometimes, if you, if I just think about the line it can end up in the wrong spot. But if I think about the shape that I'm trying to define with the line, then it comes out right. Now he kind of has a pointed head. Don't tell him I said that though, he might get mad at me. That, very close to a straight line, so I'm gonna make it even straighter. And the ears. He doesn't have that small of an ears, but his jaw and his neck is so big. So let's make the ears a little small. And he has this big muscular neck, jawline. Adam's apple. And we can draw <clears throat> a bit of his collar. I don't, I don't have room to draw the whole thing, but. I wanted to tell you the story of how I became a professional caricature artist. I was about 43 years old and I was driving a truck for a living and I really hated it. I was kind of miserable just driving the truck up and down the road all day long. I was delivering the sand and cement to a James Hardy building materials company and it paid really well, but I knew deep down inside I was supposed to be an artist. And so I had not drawn anything in a few years, but I bought a new sketchbook and I started practicing. And there were a lot of good books on how to draw caricatures. So I got those books out of the closet and I bought some new ones and I started practicing in my sketchbook. And sometimes when my truck was getting loaded, I would be practicing drawing. And I joined a society called the International Caricature Artist Society and I found out that that year they were having their convention in San Antonio, Texas where I was living. I mean I was living in Texas at the time in Arlington but they were having their convention in San Antonio. So I took a vacation and I went to the convention and I saw these great artists from all over the world drawing these amazing caricatures. And I met a guy there named Keelan Parham, and he ran about 10 to 14 of the caricature stands in Orlando, Florida, Walt Disney World. 
And so I asked him, hey, are you ever looking for new artists? And he said, hey, we're always looking for new artists. He said, let me see what you got. And I showed him my sketchbook and he was like, wow, you're good enough to work for us. So when I moved back to Florida, instead of looking for another truck driving job, I got in touch with Keelan Parhan and the people down there at Walt Disney World and they gave me a job. And I started drawing caricatures professionally for the first time at Walt Disney World. And I've never looked back. Now I'm a full-time caricature artist. I don't still work at the stands at Walt Disney World, but from time to time they call me to do events. But I do independent events and events for agents all over the state of Florida and sometimes outside of Florida. And during the week, I draw commission art for people and now I'm living my dream. So the moral of the story is you're never too old to start a new career and do what you really love in life. So thank you very much and have a great one.